Happy Monday Knitters! I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. It's Monday which means two new starts. I've got some exciting things to show you. I have a couple finishes. I've got sweater progress. My sweater actually looks like a sweater so I can't wait to show it to you. And I have a really fun new stitch pattern that I'm doing for my dishcloth of the week. So let's jump right in with finished dishcloth. Plural. Did you catch that? Dishcloths? I got two finished. This was my cast on for last week. My super simple diamond dishcloth. This was the, oh, what was it called? Delicate. Colorway was delicate. I love this cotton. Oh, it actually, I didn't even realize that while I was knitting it. Just when I see it in the camera, it does have a very delicate striping action going on. Huh. Isn't that <laughs> the things you notice when you look at yourself in the camera? It shows up more on screen than it really does in person. Isn't that fun? So nice striping, self-striping. That was a that was a both. I didn't even know that was happening, and I was knitting it. I finished that one really quick. Super simple diamond dishcloth, 3.5 millimeter needles. I love this cotton. Super easy. Super easy, super quick. Couple of evenings of knitting or one full evening, depends how dedicated you are to it, and you get it finished. This is one I've had on the go for a while. It's just been kind of sitting in a project bag and I would add little bits of color as I ended up with um, bits left over. So this is more, I kind of tried to do this with larger bits that were left over to kind of do like a color blocking. So I finished up all of these. These are all done, which is exciting. This, I think I finished this way. Finished with this way. I think that's the wrong side. Nope. <laughs> Looking where my little tails are. That's where I wove the end in. Right there. Can you see that? Anyway. So that's that. So another cute little scrappy one, multicolored, two done. I got to thinking, I thought I might try over the next few weeks to try to get two done because I want to make sure I get to my 52 probably before Christmas. Anyway, I don't know, but two done. I was super happy. Quick and easy, fun, really meditative knitting, just garter stitch back and forth, simple increase, simple decrease and you get projects finished. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, let's talk about sweater knitting. I pulled out one of my sweater sized bags from Caroline. This is one that she made for me quite a while ago, but I love it. Flowers, it's orange, perfect. And it's nice and roomy and it's gonna hold, it's gonna hold my sweater off to a good start. My little needles pouch or needles pouch. Not, that's not what I wanted to say. Accessory. It does have needles. It has my charning needles and my tape measure. This is my cute little frog bag from my needle crafts from my friend Cheryl. Aren't those frogs super cute? So that kind of carry that. That is the perfect size. It holds my tape measure, my darning needles, stitch markers, and a little itty bitty pair of scissors. Just so you know, you've got everything right at hand for when you want it. My sweater, I divided, I got all of the increases done. So my sweater, it is the Seaside Pleated Cardigan from Marie Green. It's knit top down. I am using Patton's Classic Wool in the Mercury colorway, and I am on ball two, and I almost have ball two finished. Well, I don't know, almost, maybe three quarters. It's like getting really soft and squishy. So this is the ball band. So it's kind of a, yeah, like a dark gray, maybe more gray than black, but anyways, it's nice. I think I'm gonna get lots of wear out of this because it's so neutral. And look at this, I have sleeves. I have sleeves. I have, no, no, armholes. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. No sleeves yet, but I have armholes and I have joined. 
just a teeny tiny little bit. I've got, I don't know, what do I have there? Four or five round rows, because it's not, it's done in rows, not in the round. Because it's a cardigan. But, there, if I hold it like this. So it kind of <laughs> starts to resemble a sweater. It always makes me happy when you can join in the round. Put those sleeve stitches on a on waist yarn or a holder and it just all of a sudden starts to form that sweater. So this is really, I've got this tied really tightly. Yeah, it's not, well, no, it actually stretches out to a fair good size. So I can try it on if I want to. So I'm on just straight knitting now, round and round and round for a little bit. Not much because the pleat is going to start soon. Well, I'm, I'm assuming it starts soon. <laughs> it has to start soon. So doing pleats is kind of fun and magical too. I've done pleats in the past, but not for a long time. So I'm excited. There's a few different ways you can make pleats. So I'm excited to see how this pattern tells us to do it. So that is off to a good start. So I revised, I like way scaled back my sweater knitting progress. I'm not sure how she gets sweaters knit in two weeks, unless she is knitting like all day long, like it's your job time, right? Your eight hours of knitting, which I'm not doing. I'm just doing a few hours in the evening and that's how far I got. So I really made sure because I know last video, I had said that my goal was to get to the arm divide. So I was like bound and bent that I was getting there and it didn't take me a whole lot of knitting. Just, you know, just regular consistent. I just made sure I sat down every night and did some because there was no way I was going to come back on here and tell you guys that I didn't even make it to the armhole. So I did. I'm feeling positive about it. So I don't know how far I'm going to get. Hopefully next week I'll be able to start showing you how the pleat is working out in the back, in the back because I know those little things. It's like turning the heel on a sock. Like those little magical things always just, um, Make me happy. This week's new starts because we are, where are we? Um, not quite the middle of November, but Christmas movies are on TV and I have been watching a few of them. Not every night. I've been restraining myself, so I haven't been watching them every night, but I had to start knitting with some Christmas colored dishcloth cotton. So Bernat Handicrafter, this is Mistletoe Ombre. Just a variegated red, green, and white. And I picked a new stitch pattern. I don't think I have done this one before. I've got to start going back and looking because so doing all these different stitch patterns all year long, some of them are very similar to one another, but I'm sure I have not done this one before. The book I found this stitch in, they call it Blanket Rib. And what gets a little confusing, right, is different books called Same Stitches, Different Names. But this is similar. I think it's reminding me the right stitch, I think. One I did a few weeks ago that had the columns, like textured columns, almost like a, like a rope, like a kind of feel to it. This has that same look, even though I know... When I picked this yarn, I was like, hmm, I don't think my stitch pattern's maybe going to show up quite as well. But I wanted to use the yarn and I wanted to try out the stitch, so I did it anyways. <laughs> so you can see, though, there's some texture there, right? So the right side of this pattern is actually the reverse stockinette side. So this, here, let me hold it a little closer. So there's columns. So when they call it blanket rib... They're not actually like, not meaning as in ribbing, like it's not a two by two or one by one ribbing. The rib part is this kind of column of textured stitches. And that's made on one side, you're doing a decrease. And on the very next row, on the other side, those two stitches that you just decreased together, you're increasing into. And that's what gives it just by constantly decreasing and increasing, decreasing, increasing in those same two stitches all the way up gives it kind of a, text, a textured feel. Like you can feel it 
and I can see it. I think I should probably do this in a plane. I don't know. I know you can't really see it, but it's fun. It's easy. I think this meets my knit night criteria because it is only two rows. Um, it's just what it's like knit to. Oh, okay. Don't quote me on this. What is, oh, actually I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> I think it, it, okay. Since I had to look at the pattern, maybe that's not knit night criteria, or maybe I just need to know a little bit more, but it is a multiple of three plus two stitches because you're working, you're doing a knit two. So on this side, on the wrong side, you're doing knit two, knit two together all the way across till the end. And then on the wrong side, you're doing purl two. And then in that where those two stitches were decreased, you're doing a knit front and back. Pretty easy. I did one plain row of knitting after I cast on and I added one garter stitch stitch on either side just to kind of even up those edges a little bit. So it's fun. It's cute. It, and it is once I when I was knitting this, once I got going, I didn't have to look at the pattern. So I think it might make my knit night criteria because you can read your stitches, you know, you're doing your knits on the knit side, your pearls on the wrong side, and you'll be, once you get your pattern established, you'll be able to tell what you're doing. So I know I'm going to do, okay, let me see if I can figure this out. I should be, this should be a pearl two, knit two together. No. Nope. Okay. I don't know. All right. Um, am I? Okay. Anyways. Okay. So maybe I just totally messed this all up. Okay. So maybe it's not knit night. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It's fun. I like it. And it is easy if you have your patterns sitting beside you. I'm going to carry on with this one. This one should only take me like a night or two or two to get finished in amongst my sweater knitting. Okay, that was hilarious. Okay, you guys, you know what? I don't feel like editing, so I'm going to leave that whole mishmash of my mumble jumble in there. So. <laughs> um, but trust me, it is a fun pattern, even though I probably just totally confused you about it. Um, yeah, just trust me. What is that? Do it. Do as I say, not as I do or something. Yeah, I think that's kind of falls into that category. Anyways, let's move on to the next one because I want to keep this video really, really short today for you guys. Um, next new project. This one I am excited about, but I think I ha I'm going to start it again. This one has a little backstory to it. You might remember this yarn. This yarn was a new start. Hmm, I don't know. I'm guessing like back in... March? I think it was March because I think I said something like this was after the world kind of came to a standstill and I needed something simple, something super, well, super simple, kind of mindless knitting. This started out as a shawl. I cast on um, stitches down at the bottom and I was increasing out and just a regular, you know, increase on the edge increase on either side of your center stitch and increase on the edge again. And, and I worked up, I had, I don't know, almost all this ball knit into it. It felt like a dream. It was so soft. And I pulled it out last week, the week before, out of this project bag to knit on while I was doing knit night with some of my friends. And I was knitting on it and I was looking at it, the shaping, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I like this. So I actually pulled the needle out and I was not happy with my increases on the edge. They were too tight and it was kind of pulling it in and misshaping it and I wasn't 100% happy with it. So I pulled it all out. But I really like the yarn. It's a, it's a Noro. It has some cotton in it, I'm sure, because of the feel of it. Yes. Oh, that's why it's so nice. 40% cotton, 30% silk, and 30% viscose. Cotton and silk. And I thought, I really want to knit this up into something. 
And the other thing that, you know, say, you know, when you get these ideas, maybe I shouldn't say, like, you know, you're knitting talks to you because I know people then look at you like you're a little, um, <laughs> you know, they're like, mm, you're, you're in talks to you. Okay. Yeah. You want to be careful who you say that to. You can say that to other knitters because I understand other non-knitting people think you're a little crazy when you say that. But this idea of doing bias knitting, that like just jumped into my head one morning. I thought, oh, I haven't done that for a while. That would be really fun. So what I think I'm going to do is use this to make a scarf, a bias knit scarf. And you can see I've got the rest of the yarn. I've got three more balls. Three more? I thought I had four. Okay, maybe I just have four. Four balls. So I could do, I think that would make a nice length scarf. Fairly wide, and I should, with four balls, should be able to get a nice length on here. This is 50 gram balls, 125 meters, so four or 500 meters. Okay, so I'm not gonna get super, super long. Okay, I'm gonna call this my little start here. This is gonna be my gauge swatch. I think I'm gonna take it out and take off a few stitches, will I? I know, remember my, my other scarves, I was always too, I was too paranoid that I'd made them too skinny. Now I'm thinking, I don't know, am I gonna make this one too wide? But look how that stretches out. I might take a couple of off there just because I wanna make sure I can get a good length out of it. Anyway, I started this and I think if I kind of stretch this out, you can see how it's starting. I'm gonna scoot it down here so I'm away from the end of the needle. Can you see how it's starting to shape already? So bias knitting, it I love it because it adds movement to your project. It shapes it, it slants it, either one way or the other, depending on how you start. If you start with an increase or a decrease, it will move your piece one way or the other. And it's just done with a simple, in one row you start with, I started, with um, an increase there. So I started with an increase here. See how that's starting to slant, even though I've only done about five rows of knitting. You can see how it's just, to, it's starting to move. There, just such a little itty bitty bit, but you can see how it's starting to slant this way. And on this side, it's also slanting. So I start with an increase and I get to the end and I decrease. So it's moving your piece, it's slanting it, but your stitch count always stays the same. Super easy and it just adds some fun to you, to it. The other way that I'm gonna really kind of accentuate how the diagonal, the bias is working, is I'm gonna stripe it, I think. That's my plan, I'm gonna have to try it. Part of me is like, Oh, ooh, if I stripe it, I'm going to have tons of yarn, aren't I? But this feels so nice on its own. I don't know. I get, the only way I'm going to know is if I try it. Part of me is like, oh, this is silk and cotton. Do I want to throw in some wool? And I can see you guys now all of a sudden frantically at home going, no, don't do it. Because it's going to take away from the softness. Hmm. Now I have a dilemma. What will I do? Stripe it or just go all pink? I really want to have a candy cane look. Maybe I need to do another project with a, with a striped. Maybe I need to do two bias knitting projects. Maybe I need to keep this one just as is and just let the beauty and softness of the yarn shine through. Okay, I, I can't stop touching it. <laughs> it does. It feels really, really nice. And maybe I need to find something else. Oh, do I have a red? I am not, you guys know, I have all my stuff. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I, oh, I got a better idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. The idea is like when the floodgate opens, like all these ideas come rolling in. I was going to say, I don't have a lot of red in my stash, but if you guys have seen some of my sorting videos, when I went through my, all my red yarn, I have a ton of red yarn but it's acrylic. It's like my pom-pom making yarn, but I have, like, I have a whole shelf of white and a whole shelf of red. I can just see it over there. 
I could do a diagonal. I could use some of that acrylic yarn. Um, and I could do like a candy cane because I stripe it. I could do back and forth with red, then add white and go back and forth. So I'll do uh, increase, decrease row, knit back, switch to white, do an increase row, decrease row, and then knit back and white and switch. And then my piece will slant and it'll be diagonal. What do you think? Should I do a candy cane scarf? Mm, now I'm more excited about that than I am this, but I thought this could be a Christmas present too. Okay, maybe I'll do two starts. Maybe I will. Now I'm really excited about this. I think the wool, I think I'm just going to put it back on the shelf because I don't think I want to mix wool. This is so super soft and I don't think I want to add wool to it. Even though the pink and the white would kind of look nice together, wouldn't it? But oh, we'll just pop him back over there. Okay. This may have to be something that... I show you over on Instagram. I'll, I'll do some posts. I'm really excited now about starting a red and white one. Uh oh, this guy may get pushed to the back burner. Depends what. <laughs> Depends which one brings me the most joy. And I think if I'm going to be watching Christmas movies in the evening after work, I think I need to work on a red and white candy cane scarf. Oh, I'm really excited about this. Red and red and red, white and green dishcloth. A red and white scarf. Okay, maybe. Well, if I want to give this as a gift, I'm gonna to have to get knitting on it too. Anyway, I may have to divide up my knitting time very strategic to get <laughs> get these projects done. Okay, but I think that is it. My new projects. A little chit chat about bias knitting, my sweaters ready, getting close to start the pleat. In the pattern she had us put, when we were dividing or putting the sleeve stitches on holders, as we were knitting across the back, we had to put a stitch marker in the center back, which I am anticipating is going to mark where our pleat is going to start. So that's all exciting. So I'm excited for this week, you guys. <laughs> Who knew a red and white candy cane scarf would just like brighten my morning? <sighs> Anyways, what are you guys knitting? What is bringing you joy that you were just like super excited that you can't wait to finish up whatever, you know, you're doing if it's, if it's work or, you know, you're at home or you just can't wait to get some quiet time to yourself to cast something on or pick something up and work on it. How's your Christmas knitting coming as well? Hopefully it's on track. Mine is where it always is at this time of year, which is probably behind, but that's okay. All right, everybody, I'm going to go. I've got to go over there now. I can like see all my yarn sitting there and it is calling to me. I'm going to find, I know I have what Red Heart Super Saver or something. I am, um, but that's okay. It'll make, it'll, it'll look nice. It's not going to have the feel wool and it's certainly going to feel like this cotton and silk, but it will be, give me the visual look that I'm looking for because I don't think I have any red, um, classic wool. So I can't do it in a wool, but that's okay. I'll just use what I have and it'll be great. So if anybody else wants to run out and grab some red and white yarn, Anybody else want to knit a candy cane scarf with me? <laughs> a striped red and white scarf um, to wear for the month of December. I think it'll be fun. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic week. I hope maybe I have inspired you to get out some red and white yarn and knit along with me. So let's chat in the comments. I'd love to know what you're working on. What are you finishing? How's your Christmas knitting coming? Have you done any bias knitting in the past? Is it something that you've done and, and enjoyed? Or is it something that's on your to-do list to give it a try? So I will see you in the next video, everybody. Happy knitting.